This is very controversial. Does anyone know what Vice President Bush called this in 1980? Anyone? Something D-O-O -O economics. Voodoo economics. The whole idea of uh, entrepreneurship and, and taxation and, you know, the regenerative economic development bill, not taxing new small businesses in their early years right. while they're losing money. Right. You know, so... Uh, uh, give them a chance to get established by, you know, not putting an additional burden of taxation, but saying you're trying to make a go of it. You know, you're 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 looking to employ yourself and mm -hmm. at least one other person. You know, maybe others. You know, beyond that, and you're losing money. Well, we're not going to tax you till you get established, so right. that you can then provide uh, you know tax revenues. So, uh, so uh, what's what's the point in there? Yeah, the the point there is that. If you think about it, and, and hopefully all of us, uh, you know, maybe know an entrepreneur. Nobody knows somebody. Maybe it's just in the dream stage. It's, mm -hmm. that's not, they're not even producing anything, uh, you know, part time, but it's just uh, uh, an idea, a dream. Well, just think about it. Uh, if we do know someone or we know somebody that actively has a small business, they're starting up part time. Uh, they're doing it on weekends or doing it at nights uh, or else maybe they're trying to do it, you know, full time. Think about you know that, that that person. How close is that person, or you know those partners, whoever it is, to actually closing closing down the operation? And you know, yeah, is, it's a monthly and, cash flow problem, <laughs> right? And typically, if there's a spouse involved, honey. Why don't you get a real job? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, no. Come on. Let's let's just let's tough it out a couple more months. We're just we're just about ready to turn the That's corner the kind here. That's person who will make it succeed, the person who makes it their life and knows that, uh, yes, that I am doing this, I have a dream, I'm going to do this. And right. That's the seed. That's part of this seedbed function of an economy of letting new small businesses get established. And that's where government comes in and public policy to help uh, by what, what could it do? It could, it could uh, relieve the uh, burden of uh, regulation and it can relieve the burden of taxation. So that uh, maybe that extra, those couple extra thousand dollars, be it uh, forgiveness of the, the real estate transfer tax uh, because a new home was bought or a new building was bought, right. uh, you know, to house this uh, mm -hmm. uh, this uh, small uh, uh, startup uh, company, or it's the forgiveness of sales taxes, or it's the forgiveness even of personal income tax. Uh, those couple thousand dollars can often make the difference between let's go on a couple more months to turn the corner right. or let's shut it down now because uh, we're banging our head against the wall. Yeah, and especially if it's a seasonal business, there may be some seasons where it's a, you're not getting enough sales and then you have to wait till summer or a certain time of the year. Yeah. So this is important, I think, you know, for people listening to give consideration. What are the businesses that have gotten established uh, in, in your community? What are some of the new businesses that you know that are trying to you know start up and eventually, uh, whether they're home based, uh, whether they're uh, within a, a laboratory at a, at a corporation or office at a corporation, these are businesses that eventually will populate the main streets right. of uh, our, our communities, and then some of them that grow from there will eventually populate the industrial parks. Right. Uh, but we need we need more, uh, not less, because not all of them will survive. Right, of course. And um, I'd like to bring up something. I was recently in Media, Pennsylvania, and there was a Wawa franchise that um, they announced, uh, this is our last day and we're giving free coffee to everyone. And it was very sad, and people were, people depended on that little store. And uh, just seeing the owner outside, shaking hands with everybody, I mean, that's the spirit that this guy stuck it out, but uh, yeah, well, it, it didn't work out because of the economy. But still, yeah, we why uh, if you look at what's happening all over the country, all these small mom and pop shops are closing down. It's just unbelievable this the scale of what we're seeing now. Now, what, <clears throat> at what level of government are these decisions made of where the priorities are? Like. You could just imagine people just <laughs> huddling in committees and making decisions. Okay, we're spending this much here, this much there. That's budgeting and administration. And well, even in my town, uh, and you know, not to disclose uh, 
you know, a, a, a specific uh, name or business. But, uh, you know, I know of somebody, they, they do a little something part time, uh, it's, you know, with a partner in, in their garage. Uh, and they've been, you know, just reported to me. I mean, I've gotten phone calls uh, over this. I sit on the planning commission. You now, yeah. uh, Ron, we're getting all sorts of grief from the zoning officer, yep. you know, uh, and just making it very difficult, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not that neighbors are complaining, but, you know, there's something on the books and, you know, you're going by the letter of the law right. here and, or, and, and not the spirit mm -hmm. and making it difficult for this business. I, I'd say, Eric, it's, it's every level of government and we have to be attuned to who's really the generator of uh, jobs and economic growth. Uh, is it government? No. Uh, it's it's business and primarily it's small business and all business has to get started, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in its teeny tiny stages. So from uh, municipal to county to state and to federal levels, mm -hmm. we need a greater awareness of uh, our, uh, our our business community and our entrepreneurial um, uh, directions that are um, underway in, in that community. And I also, I'd also say that small business owners need to have some degree of political savvy and understand who is making the big decisions and uh, what is causing them to run into this red tape. Like maybe they have to do some research and see, well, maybe this politician made a deal some time back and that's why we have this. Yeah. It, can become, it, it can become overwhelming for the, uh, I think, for the individual mm -hmm. entrepreneur to be paying right. attention to all this. I mean, we, we, we need a culture uh, of, uh, of, of support for, uh, for, for new small business. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and what does this include? It includes uh, getting rid of careerist politicians who, who are in too long, in it for themselves, and are expanding government. Uh, in so many states, I mean, you mentioned mm -hmm. you know states. You mentioned state laboratories. Mm -hmm. So many states in our country today. The only growth industry is the public sector, oh, or or <laughs> maybe uh, or or or, or, or um, public schools. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, these are the, this is what's growing uh, because of the uh, uh, the uh, uh, oppression, really, of of uh, government tax taxation. Mm -hmm. and, and a lack of willingness to support uh, the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I did want to get on to, and this is um, another section here, another uh, principle, and hopefully we can talk about more of these on, on future shows, but uh, uh, that, that's the first principle of regenerative economy, the, the, the seedbed function. And uh, uh, p planting seeds of uh, new businesses. Uh, the second principle I wanted to bring across was that a regenerative economy produces something that produces something. Right. And I don't think there's any greater contrast of what this principle implies. And, it, and it's an age old principle. Uh, and uh, there's no greater contrast than looking at this uh, stimulus bill, $787 billion, which with uh, interest is a trillion dollars. And, mm -hmm. and I, our public, uh, our public officials seem to uh, have this facility of talking about a trillion, you know, a trillion dollars. You know, it's uh, uh, it's like it's all <laughs> like it's you can grasp what that means. Just to give you know listeners a, a, a quick comparison, if we uh, spent or were paid or invest, let's say let's say we invested a um, dollar a second. Mm -hmm. It would take about 12 or so days to uh, invest a million dollars. Mm -hmm. How long would it take to invest a billion dollars at a, at, a, at a dollar a second? Over 32 years, you know, so that's, you know, a, a generation. Sure. If we invested a dollar a second, how long would it take to invest a trillion dollars? Well, it's 32,000. 32,000 years. <laughs> I mean, you know, so the difference be, between a million, a billion, and a trillion, it's, it's mind-boggling. And mm -hmm. these are, the, these are the, the, the kinds of figures that, you know, <laughs> people with community organizing backgrounds in Washington are, are now uh, working with on a, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Yeah, but, well, the, the implementation of those programs is critical to the success. You have to have the right managers knowing how to spend that money. First of all, the money should go to the correct places, but if it's not, uh, I mean, say you, say you do have um, some certain programs like building roads, you, you need that money spent wisely. Yeah. Well, you're 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 drawing on the second. You're you're pointing to the second principle of spending, spending money versus investing money. Well, this bill this bill mm -hmm. has been passed, the American uh, Recovery and Reinvestment Act of two thousand nine. Right. You know, committing uh, up to a trillion dollars. You know, with with interest. <clears throat> Um, we should not lose sight of, of what's going on. I think we might have mentioned it at the outset of our of our uh, talk here uh, that uh, this is you know money. <laughs> Where's this money coming from? It's the borrowing of distant future tax revenues against wealth that hasn't even been created yet. Right. I know one of the tea parties uh, next week. Uh, I think Glenn Beck's going down to the Alamo. Yes. In a certain way. All this uh, foolish spending that's going on in Washington, it's, it's like an Alamo for America's economy. It's like Custer's last stand because we are pushing ourselves toward bankruptcy. And I don't know if, it's, if I'm saying it right, it's Daryl Darryl Hannon, the member of parliament. Oh, who, Daniel, yeah. Daniel, uh, Daniel uh, right. Har Harnan, ha Hannon. Hannon, who stood up to uh, 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 the, the, the Prime, Prime Minister Brown. Uh, and gave a wonderful principle uh, for um, public policy. You can't spend your way out of a recession. You can't borrow your way out of debt. And his conclusion, and, and uh, uh, Prime Minister Brown was, I, I believe, is the former uh, exchequer of England, which which means uh, you know, like the mm -hmm. the the, tre the the Secretary of the Treasury of okay. England. And uh, Daniel Daniel Hannan's uh, point uh, on that is that. Um, England, Great Britain, is now in negative equity. Right. <laughs> the balance sheet of the nation, their debts are more than their assets. They're just paying interest. Right. And, and the United States and, and all of Europe is, is not that far behind. So uh, produce something that produces something. Uh, I like, uh, I mean, my, all of our people uh, come from a farming background. I love the garden. And, and I think that's just such a wonderful analogy for, for thinking about the, uh, the, the, our economy, you know, a garden. Yeah. And the, remember, you know, the the, land. remember the victory gardens during the World War II? Well, absolutely. Yeah. Everybody produced, you know, a little something uh, right. that put, you know, that put food on the table. That and, that, and that food produced energy to right. get up the next day and, and to work and to produce something else. Yeah, now think about where <laughs> our food comes from today. Well, yeah, it's grown and transported and goes to a supermarket packaged and... Uh, it, I think we have to think about the supply chain and uh, think about that and while we're thinking about regeneration because you're saying that one thing leads to another. Well, there is a supply chain that all, all businesses in that chain have to be intact and making a reasonable profit to, for this to continue. Uh, Eric, you're right on point and, and I just want to take the next step there and in, in, in what you're saying is that what is really produced? What is what is the um, regenerative uh, 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 product of, of a garden? It's not just the fruit. See, we, we mm -hmm. think the of seeds. a garden. It's the seeds. See, the seeds are what produces that multiple mm -hmm. of, of return, not just the fruit. So a regenerative economy produces something that produces something. So uh, it, it has to produce economic activity that leads to other activities economic activity, mm -hmm. which goes back to the first point of, of sowing the seeds of new jobs, but also of producing something else that's not just consumed. Mm -hmm. So if you look at this stimulus bill, largely what it does is spend money, which ultimately um, fades away. Its impact ultimately diminishes. Mm -hmm. But if instead resources went through the private sector to establishing and growing new businesses, there would be something there to produce something else. Right. Now, is it is it is it clear? For instance, um, the community where I live, um, Hellertown and uh, the Lehigh Valley, uh, we're supposed to receive two and a half million dollars uh, of this uh, stimulus. Uh, excuse me. It's a uh, a little over four million, four point two million dollars to repave Main Street. Right. 
And I've talked to some people, you know, about does it really need lots? I'm, it's not like they're glaring potholes where cars are, <laughs> right. you know, breaking axles. Uh, yeah, well, the question is, where did that original idea come from? And was that uh, a pork barrel project? That, well, I don't know the history. But... Well, where, where the whole stimulus bill came from is, is uh, the, uh, you know, the, 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 well, there were, there were a lot of bills and uh, a lot of projects in, in Congress for 20 years that... Mm-hmm had been tabled because they were seen as uh, just spending <laughs> spending favors in districts. Right. But uh, the large majority of, of this spending came from uh, the White House reaching out to governors mm-hmm. and mayors, the Conference of Mayors, uh, asking, what are your so-called shovel-ready projects? Uh-huh. So in addition to the $4.2 <laughs> million for repaving of Main Street, there's also a, a 15 point something million dollars for resurfacing I-78 from Hellertown to Easton. Yeah, and in my community, the same thing. There are some improvements on Route 30, which I'm not sure if we really need right now. Yeah. Right, and, and so you can look at this money, like see, in, in our community, that would be $20 million. So, you know, everybody can do, you know, do the math on, on things like this, but if you took $20 million, and what does it cost to, you know, to capital, to create a new business? Well, you need a, you need a work, or to create a new job, you need a workplace, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. So let's let's just say uh, you, you, you know you say a workplace a hundred thousand dollars you know for uh, whatever uh, machinery equipment necessary for a worker to do something productive every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you take twenty million uh, twenty million dollars and that money went toward uh, you know business development or expansion, that would be fifty fifty. 50 small businesses hiring, you know, with, with four people each. Sure. So that's a question in, in a community. Would you rather, and of course, some of them are going to fail, mm-hmm. uh, but would you rather see these businesses expand uh, or you know, get established or expand, or would you rather see your road resurfaced? You know, which is, which is the priority? You can only choose one. Well, I think people need to do some research and find people who have the uh, who can find out the political reasoning behind these projects and then try to advocate for the ones that make sense. See, we, we have a road our way that was already resurfaced last year, and that's one of my questions that, that mm-hmm. I asked in, in our local newspaper. Sure. How many permanent jobs? It was a couple million dollars to resurface. Yeah, there's maybe three months, six month jobs, and, and then they're gone. Well, I, to, to resurface, it, it took uh, the the section in our community. It took, uh, it took within a week. It was done. Yeah. But the the point is, how many permanent jobs did that resurfacing, you know, create? Yeah, the uh, contractors basically. <laughs> it, it gave them work for you know a little while, right. and you know then the money was in their pockets. Yeah. And what did they do? You know, it, it doesn't was, solve the problem. Yeah. No, there's not. It's not. It didn't produce no, something didn't, right. that produced something else the next day. Right. So I'd like to think about education and homeschooling as a possible area like what if people were able to get a tax credit for homeschooling to help them pay for their expenses well that's the most probably important investment that could produce something else um, but l- let me just finish yeah. with one one other one other uh, ex- sure, example on uh, producing something that produces something spending versus investment um, that for instance, if, if you're standing by uh, a lake or a pond and, you, you know, you throw a stone, what mm-hmm. happens? It creates some ripples. Sure. That's like spending. You know, you see the ripples and even after you're not throwing the stone, there's still some activity, but eventually it dissipates. Right. That's what happens with spending. But if you put a pump in yep. the middle of that pond, mm-hmm. that pump is aerating the pond every day mm-hmm. uh, and it's uh, uh, also... Uh, uh, air, it's also oxygenating. Well, right. No, uh, uh, yes, not air, no, I'm sorry. It's it's aer- aerating the pond and filtering the pond. Right. So it's 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 keeping that pond um, uh, to the point where it could support plant and, and fish life. So you're right. Mm-hmm. It's not stagnant. Mm-hmm. You know. Whereas spending could lead could lead generally leads to a stagnant economy, but economy where there's an investment leads to something that gets produced the next day. And there's no greater investment investment we can have in education. And you pointed to homeschooling. Um, why is it that uh, more spending, and you could look at studies, we could just look at our own uh, public school districts. Mm-hmm. Why is it that more money does not produce um, higher graduation rates, mm-hmm. uh, 
uh, higher uh, test scores, um, you know, uh, more college entrance, if that's necessarily, a, you know, a, 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 a guideline anyway for you know, the success of education. But, you know, for the, those three points, um, because education is, the primary responsibility of education is the student. Mm -hmm. Having money and more resources does not promote more uh, uh, a better educated person. It's the desire of the person, her himself. Uh, educatio is, uh, you know, as opposed to pedantry, uh, which is, you know, instilling knowledge. Educatio is, you know, the Latin term for drawing out what's in the person, mm, you know, right. dr drawing out. For, and that's exactly what, what homeschooling does. Mm -hmm. What greater teacher is there of any student uh, than his or her parents? Right. And so ex exactly, and, and um, actually, you know, I can put in a little plug from uh, from our uh, campaign uh, last year for the uh, the, the state house of, of representatives in Pennsylvania. We had c a couple dozen kids who were homeschooled, who uh, you know from uh, uh, from like ten to eighteen, who were involved and eager. The most educated students you want to meet. Um, the, the the most courteous young young people the most alert mm -hmm. uh, uh, there, there's there's something uh fundamentally good about homeschooling children we met so many and 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 canvassing so many um families that were homeschooling their children mm -hmm. with bright alert uh active engaging uh young kids who were often a couple grades ahead of where they should be mm -hmm. uh, because of that learning environment. And so your question is, well, why should we, and, and if this is fundamental uh, to producing something that produces something, there, uh, that an educated, an educated person is ultimately uh, what's going to produce something for our economy. Yeah, the next entrepreneur. Yeah, the, the next inventor, the next discoverer, the next uh, uh, writer, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the next scientist. Uh, um, and and so uh, we we need education. So why is it that say homeschool families or families that choose a non-public uh, option for education? Why should they pay twice by paying real estate taxes for the uh, the public school uh, and then also paying essentially for their time because somebody has to stay stay home and not sure. work, and, and so it essentially becomes an unpaid job. For the parent to stay home, sure, and you know, and, and teach the you know te teach the child to you know uh, pull a curriculum uh, you know together, and that person has more of an investment in the process. That parent is really <laughs> going to make sure the kid learns because they're invested in it. Well, I, I, absolutely, that's you know, and that's the the example of uh, you know I think what all of us can see with uh, with homeschooling uh, you know students that we might know. And so we often hear of vouchers. I, I personally don't think the voucher route is the right way to go politically because that's uh, another line item uh, that has to be appropriated, you know, typically in a state legislature. Right, and they're being taken away now. <laughs> you can see that. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, and, and I think there was, a, there was a voucher bill, was it, uh, was it last year in uh, Utah, that went down to the feet. Of course, you know the 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 uh, the, the, the public school unions, uh, you know, rally against this kind of thing because they're uh, not interested in any kind of competition <laughs> or drawing away of resources from you know from uh, the, the the public schools. To me, the way to go would be through tax credits, and we have uh, an excellent uh, tax credit program here in Pennsylvania. The uh, uh, and if I get it right, uh, EITA Educational Investment tax assistance uh, where uh, companies uh, can uh, receive a, a rather significant uh, tax credit mm -hmm. uh, by uh, uh, giving money to uh, a scholarship fund, okay. which uh, uh, I, I know would support uh, non-public, uh, you know, private or parochial education. I don't think homeschooling is, is, is in that picture. Uh, at this point, but it's very successful, and, and mm -hmm. the, the legislature has seen that in the last number of years, and keeps increasing uh, the allotment of, of tax credits. So, whereas 
a voucher program would be a line item appropriation of this much money has to go with basically a, a check being sent out to a family that could only be applied for uh, an educational um, uh, tuition bill. Um, the idea of, of a tax credit, say, by the parents of, of homeschooled uh, uh, children would be to me, comprehensive, say $750 you know, for a grade school student, maybe $1,500 for high school students. Mm -hmm. So you don't pay any state tax, starting with, with personal PIT, you know, personal income tax, sure. uh, um, or uh, even, even sales tax. You don't pay any state tax against that amount. So maybe mm -hmm. you, you don't have that much, uh, say you have several children and uh, your uh, state income tax uh, doesn't, uh, give you uh, enough of you know credits you know to use them. Well, then start looking at other you know ta taxes that you pay. Yeah, uh, I think what that buys you get an extra book for teaching or yeah extra materials. Sure. Well, it's it's largely the it's largely the time because mm -hmm. uh, again the parent would be a, you know yeah, a very cost. productive unpaid worker mm -hmm. who's paying you know double for um, a public school mm -hmm. that. Uh, in, in many cases, does not produce uh, the, the the same result, the same high level result that a non-public school option produces. And uh, uh, children that have higher graduation rates, uh, higher college acceptance rate, and and, and better test scores. Mm -hmm. And I would go a step further. You're using a portion of the home like a business. It's it, like a business can take a business tax deduction for a home office. Well, if you're homeschooling, you're storing supplies, you're using space. There should be yeah, something similar. Yeah, it's a classroom, and I, I, absolutely. And and this is all, and and probably in, in you know in, in conclusion here, and you know for a regenerative economy, uh, it, it clearly you can clearly see what we're pointing toward here, and and this is um, fa this is part of the uh, foundation of our our, our nation um, that a regenerative economy has a limited government and, and 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 so when you're talking about education what's the what's the thwart to uh, you know to s supporting uh, homeschooling it's the government mm -hmm. <laughs> you know and it's and and exactly your program uh, uh, last week about uh, you know car check and uh, right. you know and prompting more unionization when frankly unions have been successful in, in the last number of years. Uh, they, uh, they, there's a high degree of success when they, uh, when unions uh, attempt to uh, uh, unionize a workplace. Uh, I can't. Somehow, I'm thinking it's like in the 60, 70 percent uh, percent range of success. Okay. So there's a track record of success. Um, and unions right now have the ability to to uh, unionize uh, any kind of business. Yeah, the secret ballot. Yeah. Uh, and well, see the the, the card check bill also uh, includes uh, uh, you know ma uh, ma man once once it's unionized, once enough uh, uh, employees mm -hmm. majority sign you know the card uh, you know under certain uh, there's which a whole could time be under schedule. Co coercion. Yeah. Well, there's there's uh, 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 ma mandatory arbitration. There's yeah, binding it takes arbitration. Too long, sure. You yeah. know. And, uh, and and the large point is that there's already this opportunity here, but see that becomes another thwart to uh, you know to homeschooling and to the establishment of small businesses too. Oh, wow. If if this other layer of uh, say either the teachers unions gets involved because they're not interested in, in homeschooling or, or non-public choices, uh, or if unions get involved in, uh, you know, all these small businesses that we're talking about uh, having become established, well, it becomes another layer of expense right. that that business has to cover during especially its, its, its formative years. Right. And I'd also like to add, there are new creative ways of providing education, like distance learning and online courses, and there, people will come up with the creative solutions themselves. I don't think you need government uh, throwing money at schools or forcing things down their throat. I think it, these things will naturally come from teachers and from the grassroots up. I just thought it would be good uh, on this topic of, uh, you know, a uh, regenerative economy that has, you know, that promotes entrepreneurship, the seeds of new businesses, and especially businesses that uh, produce something that produce something. Um, that if any listeners could 
could maybe identify mm -hmm. you know what's uh, their uh, their you know their small business of the week or of the month or just sure, an, an example yeah. and maybe not necessarily name them if, if listeners uh, yeah, don't want to do that but to identify a business you know what 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 are they doing and what's you know what's a, a little bit of the profile of that business um, you know what what industries it in and you know to give example and encouragement to other mm -hmm. you know other entrepreneurs or people who are listening who who themselves might know an entrepreneur. Yeah, I'm hoping to make this show more interactive by providing that forum, and we're also using that forum. We're reading books together, and we're going to be discussing the books as well. I post some discussion questions, and people can post about that. It's just starting off, but it will grow. Well, Eric, thanks very much, and I mm -hmm. hope this does spark a little bit of interest. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's uh, you can see it's uh, uh, we, we've already referenced uh, several of the shows, so there is a you know, a binding theme to... Yeah, that's uh, great. I wanted something like that. So we need more citizen candidates actually doing what you're doing. You're, you have a belief system that uh, this is... Um, by living in the United States, it's part of my obligation of citizenship. Uh, yeah, I, I, absolutely. But it's... The uh, the system is stacked against uh, you is. know the you know the the, the citizen legislator uh, or the uh, you know the active citizen uh, making a contribution. The the system is is set up like I, I was just at the Pennsylvania Leadership uh, mm -hmm. Conference and uh, what uh, uh, incumbents have something like a ninety six percent reelection rate, uh, you know, and right. uh, see for instance our our, our governor. Uh, uh, I, I understand outside of uh, Philadelphia and the Philadelphia suburbs, which is where we're recording this right now, mm -hmm. uh, he's becoming increasingly unpopular right, throughout the state. And uh, but he wrote a lot of you know popularity by being a nice guy. You know the the right. fellow I was up against. You know we're the same age. I've been in small business for twenty five years. He's been in the legislature for you know, <laughs> for for, for twenty five years. You know the the governor. He's mm -hmm. he's you know he's become popular by being a nice guy and and being known. A lot of people just know him as a com a Comcast. Uh, you know uh, <laughs> right. uh, you know a, a spokesperson. You know for the Eagles. But uh, Ed Rendell has seriously jeopardized our Commonwealth by spending, taxing, and borrowing above and beyond what should have been done. Right. Now, I think if we had a lot more citizen candidates actually doing what you're doing, and you see an election coming up, and you have a bunch of citizens doing creative things like uh, using the internet and reaching out to people in the community, I think that's a force that can eventually make some changes. Well, and, you know, especially, uh, you know, even on the school board, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the, the town council, uh, you know, supervisor, councilor level and on the school board up where and in the Lehigh Valley, there are a couple of uh, uh, school districts that uh, don't even have enough candidates uh, to mm -hmm. fill, fill the slots. Uh, and you know when you think about it, what's what's for 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 a homeowner after you know an employed homeowner after um, uh, federal withholding you know mm -hmm. taxes? What's the largest tax that you pay? It's, it's school property taxes, <laughs> right? You know, and 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 the other uh, you know county and city property taxes, but school property taxes, and so being on the school board, you have you know uh, direct you know involvement in making votes for what that millage rate's going to be. Right. You know, and so, and especially if you have uh, children, and uh, unfortunately what, what happens a lot of times is that it's relatives of, <laughs> relatives of union members <laughs> right. run for school boards and end up making mm -hmm. votes that, <laughs> for, for, uh, for pay increases and for strikes and for benefits that affect themselves, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and, and so, um, uh, we we yeah abs absolutely Eric we need to get back to you know what was a, what was original to uh, some of the original ingredients to the greatness of this nation and and that included uh, people taking interest in becoming you know as knowledgeable on public affairs you know local state especially local public affairs mm -hmm. uh, as much as they are knowledgeable say on who the you know the the latest person, you know, to get kicked off of American Idol. Sure. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and then also taking active interest in, in serving um, right. and, and, and serving the common good, serving the community as, as a duty of citizen, because if we don't do it, somebody else will to their own interest.
not to the common interest. Mm -hmm. And I have hope that our message is getting out there, because if you look at these tea parties, we're attracting a lot of people to these events, because people are seeing the lies that we were fed, and they are getting involved, they're starting, and they're learning. And I think as more people learn, the, the people who, people will eventually step up. So we have to hold out that hope and keep praying for that. This is one of the one of the uh, uh, announcers up our way is you know on a conservative radio station asked well what what's the benefit of these tea parties well uh, you know they're going to accomplish anything well it's like you said it's mm -hmm. it's a chance for people to meet and this yes. is part of the great one of the great traditions of America too of of uh, what what's made democracy in America uh, so admired uh, you know around the world uh, is is we we've had this tradition of uh, people meeting each other, joining associations, you know, and this is what this is. It's, 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 it's a new form of association specifically directed or all around the country toward excessive government uh, spending uh, and, and debt. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it, I guess we're, we're finished, we're, it's, it's almost tea time to, to, sure. to, to finish up here. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have our cup of tea. Mm -hmm. um, I was just reading today the first, uh, the, the, the most famous tea party, if you can call it the first in American history, mm -hmm. was in uh, 1773. Yep. And uh, what I thought was interesting is that the, um, the British government, uh, and, uh, and you wonder if this sounds familiar, um, <laughs> Sent, sent British ships, bypassed the private market, bypassed U.S. ships, mm -hmm. uh, hired uh, British ships to, to essentially uh, bail out a failing, uh, the failing uh, East India Tea Company, right. uh, which uh, was having its tea get stacked up in warehouses. So right. Doesn't that sound familiar <laughs> that, oh, uh, uh, that, that the, the, the government got involved to, uh, to prop up uh, a company uh, that was uh, failing and uh, didn't hire uh, U.S. shippers, and that was mm -hmm. really what was uh, what what got the ire of uh, you know uh, Americans or the colonists at the time, especially in Boston. And uh, they didn't charge uh, uh, certain taxes on this tea to make it cheaper when there was a lot of uh, you know tea coming in from Holland. So so what did we do? Well, we we tossed it overboard. Right. So and, and and these tea parties need to aim at the same thing. We need to toss a lot of uh, uh, lifelong uh, uh, office holders who are working for their interests, not the not the common interest of the community and the country, and we need to toss them out. And remember, we are a democracy. Uh, Obama is in for four years, but that doesn't mean that after him we can re we can go back to our fundamental principles and values. Hopefully so, and hopefully uh, things like this uh, this radio uh, uh, program will uh, help to keep these uh, values and principles uh, alive. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us, Ron. Uh, you're just a wealth of information, and uh, we'll do this as necessary as new issues come up and as you have more things to say. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Eric. It's a pleasure. Shalom. Shalom. Your homework is at conservativeu.podomatic.com. And the Conservative You Discussion Forum on Chimpsey Radio presents the Republican Revolution.